At San Francisco's Museum of Modern Art, SF MoMA, one of the most popular works is neither a painting nor a sculpture. At nearly 9 meters high and 46 meters wide, it's the largest living wall in the United States. It's nice to see something green and alive. You know, every we have so much like hardscape and uh, go, go, go in life. This is kind of like soft and inviting and it's inspiring. I would like something like this in my home. <laughs> you know, we're in this place of climate change and there's so much going on in terms environmentally that uh, this probably seems like a good idea for everyone to have. The SF MoMA Living Wall has 26,000 plants. There are 38 different species. About 20% are native to California. On average, these plants are getting only about one hour of direct sunlight per day. I very definitely think of it as a work of art. When you get up close, you see not only green, but also purple flowers and pink flowers and yellow flowers. And there are sometimes butterflies hovering in front of the wall. I love that people really gravitate to it. SF MoMA's chief curator, Janet Bishop, says the experience of seeing the living wall is never the same because it depends on the time of day and the season. It was a big commitment to take on something that would need ongoing um, care and tending, but I don't think there's been a single moment of regret. It's, um, it's a work of art that has really become so um, closely identified with the experience of, of SF MoMA as a whole and an absolute favorite among our visitors. The man behind the living wall is horticulturist David Brenner, who began the project with designs on his iPad. Each one corresponds to a different plant, so it's kind of a key to determining where each plant goes. Brenner served an apprenticeship at the Royal Botanic Gardens in London, where he learned about plants that grew naturally on trees and rock faces. He brought that knowledge to a greenhouse at the University of California Polytechnic State University, where he experimented with growing plants vertically. Brenner and his team visit SF MoMA every week to maintain the wall. Being in drought-prone California, sustainability is always in mind. In this case, at the SF MoMA, we're using condensate water, which is a byproduct of the cooling tower system. And then we're taking that and we're adding it to a large recirculating tank. So we'll, then we'll send that to the living wall, and any, any excess water is captured and reused again. Brenner has helped San Francisco and California become a hotbed for living wall designs. He's done about 200 projects in California, including this one inside the lobby of commercial building Foundry Square. This living wall has two different styles, one serving as a backdrop to a sculpture and the other containing 20 different species. But inside San Francisco's tallest skyscraper, the home of tech giant Salesforce, the living wall concept takes on a new twist. On floor 61, the top floor, you'll find 24 living columns. Combined with a 360-degree view of the city, Salesforce calls this place the world's greatest living room. Here we have 24 different columns with you know, 12 different exposures. We're basically on a column, and then there's columns as we go around, so they each have a different uh, exposure to the natural sunlight. Um, so finding the right palette that would you know, work throughout the year as that sun does change. I love the diversity, you know, you really have 128 different plant species, 48 different orchids, you know, 25,000 total plants. Today, visitors from the American Institute of Architects of San Francisco are soaking up information about how the steel structures were turned into colorful plantscapes. We're not taught this in architecture school. We're taught about metal and glass and wood, not so much living plants and how to incorporate it. So I think you need the right partner. I just call everything an orchid or a fern, but there's more to that. So the botany, I think, would be an important part, and I think it'd be a great sector for architecture to intermingle those two fields. Brenner believes the living wall trend is catching on throughout the country as congested cities search for new ways to transform concrete jungles into natural experiences. Mark New, CGTN, San Francisco.